Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to do more advanced melee attacks with the melee module. Because we can only attach one item as a weapon, we'll be using the melee module but not to its full extent. Before we start, I would like to thank all of my Patreon supporters for the amazing support. This scene will be made available on Patreon. So we're starting off with an empty scene here. So let's, uh, let's add a plane, make it a bit bigger, 10 by 10. Let's make sure it's all on zero. I'm going to add two players, so our actual player character and a enemy character. There we go. And let's rotate him around. Perfect. Now he's mostly going to be a punching bag, but at some point also use blocking, so quite important. Now before we really start, I want to highlight a couple of things. Because of the way the melee module works, we can only attach one weapon, meaning, you know, normally that would be an actual weapon and that would, you know, use do the hits, which makes complete sense. Unfortunately, because of the way... Um, because of the way the... You know, normal fighting works, so you have right hand, left hand, feet, headbutts, you know, the whole thing. This wouldn't actually work with the melee module, not to its full extent anyway. So we're basically going to um, create a couple of workarounds, uh, small ones, and this means we'll, we will only be using part of the melee module, so we won't have full functionality. I really do want to highlight that. So I'm not saying this is a perfect solution, but as far as I'm aware, without modifying existing scripts, it's the, well, pretty sure it's the only solution. And I, I hope I'm wrong, but you know, it works well. So uh, let's just get started. So I'm going to generate some light here. And the reason for that is I do actually want there to be a, uh, a folder um, simply because it makes it slightly easier for me to uh, to share this on Patreon as well. But, you know, I also want to do everything from scratch for once. So let's create a folder here. Let's call this Clips. Create another folder. Let's call this Prefabs. And another folder. And let's call this Weapons. There we go. I'm also going to create a material just for the floor um, because it's too bright right now with everything being white it's a bit annoying so let's make this uh, I don't know there we go dark gray that's fine so we we need to create some clips here so um, game creator melee melee clip and let's call this uh, combo one now the important thing is you can't press Ctrl D to duplicate and I'll, I'll show you why as well. So if we, uh, I don't know, let's do, uh, I don't know, change that, whatever. If I were to duplicate this clip and I would remove it from combo two, on combo one you'd see it be gone as well. So that's not going to work. So I'm going to remove this clip and I'm going to add that again just to, you know, just to show what we need to do. And here we have a duplicate button. And now it's creating a duplicate. And on this one, I'll remove the on execute. And as you can see now, it works. So you need to use the built in duplicate function. So not control D. Quite important to point out. Cool. So, um, yeah, we have that. Let's do. Uh, I'm actually going to remove it by the way because I do want to do something else first we just need the one clip for now and we're going to create a prefab now this prefab is going to be our actual hitbox and like I said before um, traditional melee module won't uh, won't work fully and we'll need to have our own system kind of mixed in and the reason we're still using the melee module is simply because well we do want to have combos and we do want to have blocking and the way all of this works with the melee module is just really great and it would be a shame to miss out on that and honestly it would be so much work to set up something as the combo system from the melee module that it's just easier to use the melee module anyway a lot easier 
um, but we can't use everything. So this is, will be our hitbox. Um, so this is fair, it needs to be a trigger and it needs to have a tag. And I set up a melee tag here. Um, if you don't know how to add a tag, just press add tag, little plus and create your own tag. So I'm going to drag this out and I'm going to rename this to hitbox. And as you might have guessed, this will go in our prefab folder and I'm going to remove this. The next prefab I'm going to be adding is, um, let's look up the original sword weapon. So that is part of the melee example. So we're going to be dragging that in and I'm going to unpack this prefab, rename it to um, melee prefab. There we go. And we're going to drag it in here as well. And the reason for that is I, I you know, we can remove this from the scene. Uh, I do need to have uh, an object with the blade component. If you don't have this, the melee module simply won't properly function. But like I said, we can't actually use it. So what we're going to do is we're going to change it to a segment. We're going to make it incredibly small and we're going to remove the, the sword obviously as well. And that's it. We just need to have a prefab with that component, but like I said, we can't actually move it. Um, no weapon trail. And yeah, that's it. So it does need to be there, but um, well, it's not going to do anything. It will just enable the melee module to function. So in weapons, we need to create a new weapon. So game creator, Um, melee and melee weapon. So let's call this uh, fighter. Let's rename it. Um, I'm going to call it brawler. I don't know why. I think that's better. And we need to create a shield as well. So game creator melee shield. And it's not going to be an actual shield. It will be our brawler block. Now the brawler block, as you can see here, um, doesn't need to have really have anything. So this is just going to be blocking. It only needs to have a state, um, so an animation clip basically. And we can draw in our brawler block here. I know, a bit cheesy, but that's fine. Um, I'm going to lock this and I'm going to drag in that melee prefab straight away before I forget. I'm going to attach this to root. Again, we're not using it, but it does need to be there, otherwise it simply won't work. i um, going to do a couple of... Um, we will set those up later. Unfortunately, hit reactions simply won't work um, because there's no actual melee detection. Uh, again, one of the you know small downsides here. Um, there's not going to be any audio effects either, um, again, because, you know, either they're drawing and we're not actually drawing our weapon, you know, we're just using our body, so we're just changing stance, and there's no impact, etc. So, again, we'll only be using the com actual combo side, no hit reactions. Which will make it a lot faster to set up, obviously, but yeah, there's some, uh, some downsides to that. So, um, our first combo, um, we're going to do this on execute. So we're going to attach our prefab, the one we just created. And I think it was called hitbox, right? I can't find it. Oh, on our player, sorry about that. Um, I think it was called hitbox, there we go. And the first, as far as I remember, the first combo um, was a right hand anyway. But the reason I want this is because it's going to save some time with setup if we duplicate this um, weight. So 0 0.8 seconds, that's about how long the first animation takes. And then at the end, we're going to remove it. So let me explain what we're doing here. So in our first combo, because we can't use the actual hit detection, we are attaching our own hitbox and we have the liberty to attach it per combo on the body part we want. So if we're going to mix up combos with kicks, headbutts, you name it, 
we can attach the hitbox to every body part we want and that's the that's the trick here that's what we're doing but because the melee combo system is so useful and good we're still using the combo system but yeah we can't use everything about it anyway enough about that let's uh let's start duplicating so duplicate we have a two we have our three and i'm going to duplicate it again four and five now this won't be a combo so i'm going to rename this so this will be a thrust and this will be a um, roundhouse because i already know which animations i'm going to use and these will be all of our attacks now i can already drag those in which is pretty cool so i'm going to lock our brawler weapon and we can actually start using those clips already so combo ah yeah another important thing um, when it comes to the order it actually matters which order you put these in so um, because these will have a special input so input forward and with a I'm just going to be using a here is enabled um, the order of this actually matters so a, de a default combo is none and these need to be above the default combo I know it's a bit sounds a bit weird but otherwise it simply won't work so it's not a limitation it's just an order ordering thing so something to keep in mind so this will be our combo one this will be our combo two and this will be two a's and this will be our combo three which will be three a's so yeah you know you can have more special inputs so you know you have um running forwards is one um we can even add that you know why not but the important part is that if you make that you need to to make sure it's above the other ones all of these special inputs need to be above um you know the other things basically so none the default combos always need to be below now the nice thing here is obviously you can mix it up as well so we're using a's here but you can add different combo chains to have different effects you can make this a really really elaborate system basically so you could have you know a left mouse click b combo a um, right mouse click b combo b and then you can start mixing up combos so pretty cool actually um but yeah that's that's it really nothing else uh, we need to set up here um you know that's uh that's pretty much it we do need as you can see we do need another um we need another combo so let's duplicate this as well and let's call this run punch or whatever i'm not even sure it's going to be a punch yet but again it doesn't really matter all that much um, so we can just look it up here uh, run punch there we go run punch so yeah that's uh that's it for this part now next up we do need to create some states as well so we need to create one simple state which is going to be our blocking um brawler block i don't know and we need to create one locomotion state um, locomotion state and this will be uh, brawler idle now just like the default setup for um, for game creator I'm only going to set up the idle animation here but I do want to highlight you can actually have completely different animations for combat and I think that's actually really cool um, you know that your combat animations can be completely different this way I think it's uh, it's actually pretty awesome so enough about that let's actually start setting up some animations now I'm using uh, Frank Climax um, RPG fighter or something like that um, I'll link it in the description so Frank fighter and in root motion now in order to make sure I, I you know I remember which ones I want to use I'm going to be um, you know collapsing them basically so I want to use attack one, which is this one, and that's going to be my trust. Or you know, is it? 
Let me actually... So I'm going to use this as the roundhouse kick. I think that's pretty cool. And the important thing here is that you um, turn these options on. So bake into pose, root transform, and an offset of 0 0.1 to make sure he's not floating. Quite important. What is this attack? No, it's not really interesting. And that's just another roundhouse kick. Um, there's even air combos, um, which is awesome, you know, for Devil May Cry type combat. There's a, it's a really cool set. I mean, it's just going to be uh, honest here. We have the evade, uh, evades. Now I'm going to use guard as well. This will be our blocking. Those weird things won't be visible. Don't worry about it. Um, I'm going to use one hit animation. Um, so we'll create a state for that. And that's simply because, uh, just because we can't use the melee module hit states, we can still use hit states that just won't be part of the melee combo. Doesn't really matter all that much. Um, we need to use an idle as well. And one annoying little thing is that this idle animation has all of the roots uh, root motion baked in, which is just insanely annoying. Um, so we can't actually uh, modify that. We can modify it, it just takes a bit more work. Um, so we'll do that. And I think that was a running attack. Yeah, that was this one. Um, that's actually really cool. Using the feet as well, which is uh, quite original. And yeah, like I said, um, have the settings like this and yeah, apply. And yeah, this is what the running attack should be. So make sure based upon original. Um, what is this skill? I'm actually be going to be using this one for the trust. There's a lot more movement in this one, so that's uh, that's actually a lot better. Again, you know, root motion baked in, so we'll uh, yeah we'll have to use something original there. Um, but yeah, pretty cool. So uh, let's use this one. Are there some other skills that are useful? Uh, that's just way too much. Yeah, it's a Dragon Ball type of move. That's pretty awesome as well. And as you can see, you know that's a nice thing here. Um, you know you can create some really special attacks. That's just insane. <laughs> that's really cool actually. But yeah, I'm not going to go that far, but. Uh, yeah anyway so yeah you have walking animations there's a there's a lot you can do so other than that i'm going to use the basic combo one so i'm going to expand these again i made sure all of these were ticked and um i think we had attack three that was a roundhouse kick yeah that's cool as well and yeah i mean that's uh, that's pretty much it we have the idol we have the guard so let's start setting these up in our clips. So I'm going to go to the first clip here. Um, there's one more I need. So we had the brawler block. I need the, the hit state as well. So let's add another state, simple state and um, hit state. And there we go. Now, normally you could look all of these up and just you know, look them up like this. Unfortunately, the way Frank um, named all of his animations that is that they have the same name as you can see here which makes it really 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 annoying to look up so yeah i uh i wanted to highlight that i'm pretty sure if i just take it out yeah it will just be the same name that's really uh it's really annoying but yeah so it will take a bit more work to uh to set up these combos unfortunately so I'm going to lock them I'm going to go to root motion and dragging combo one and yeah, we have to do it like this. Now make sure you extract root motion. Um, all of these settings are going to be unchanged. I'm going to use, well, can don't even have to do anything here. Um, so it's an attack, it's blockable. This is still important because we are going to be using block states um, and posture, etc. We're not really doing anything with this. So yeah, wanted to, uh, wanted to highlight that. So. Make sure you extract root motion though. So let's do uh, let's do the rest real quick as well, as quick as we can anyway. So combo two, extract root motion. 
combo three. And then for our special play, uh, attack, so we have the roundhouse uh, attack, which is that roundhouse kick. And that was attack three. And yeah, I think that's uh, that's a pretty cool one, especially because um, we'll change this in a bit. But because we're using different body parts, I think that's really awesome. There we go. We have the run punch. Oh yeah, so that wasn't actually a punch, that was a kick, but pretty cool. Um, so we'll drag that in. And I think that was... I think that was the actual running attack, there we go. So yeah, that was a really cool animation. I actually really did like that. Did I change that animation properly as well? I did. Perfect. And then we have our thrust, and we use the skill attack for that. There we go. Perfect. Extra group motion. So that was it for the clips. Now we do need to set up the states as well. So let's make sure we all do that at once. So hit state, and for this hit state, I'm uh, I'm simply going to use the first hit. There we go. And you can use other ones, you know. Honestly, it doesn't really matter. Whatever you prefer. Um, Brawler idol. So in this case, um, we can actually look it up. So. I think it was RPG, Fighter, Idol. Yeah, there we go. And we'll come back to modifying this as it had root motion baked in. It's incredibly annoying. Um, unfortunately, the blocking one didn't have that, so we're good there. So let's lock this again. And that was guard. Perfect. So that's all of those animations, clips, I'm pretty sure set up. I don't think there was anything else to set up, but let's have a look. So we have the block, we have our idol, and obviously you can fill this out with all of the other animations that are in the pack. And that's the nice thing about it. I'm just going to keep it at the idol for now, but it's really cool that you can set up everything else. So we have our combo. We have our hit state, roundhouse, we didn't actually extract root motion here. And we have our trust. Now you can still modify all of this, so if movement forwards isn't enough for you, you can actually, you know, um, just open it and, you know, play with this chart a bit so you can have more movement, um, which is really cool. It's a lot of uh, flexibility here. So let's actually start mixing it up. So player attached to right hand, that's fine. This should actually be left hand. Combo three is right hand again. Roundhouse is the right foot. So right foot. Oh, let's make sure we actually remove it from the correct body part as well. Um, so this should be from the left hand. And we're removing those hitboxes straight away just to make sure we're not, um, you know, our body doesn't become poison, basically. That's kind of the idea. So, run house is a right foot. Um, run punch. Um, I mean, it was both feet, I think, so you could attach it to both feet if you want. Um, yeah, let's just do that. So, right foot and left foot. And, you know, let's make sure we remove it from both as well. Um, and right foot. There we go. So, yeah, that was actually both. Um, I'll still need to look up the, uh, you know, how long it actually takes that animation to play. But let's just make sure we do it first. Um, and the thrust, I'm 
pretty sure that was um, the right hand as well. Now, one little thing I still like to do is, as you can see, this uh, this skill actually takes two seconds, and that's quite important. So two seconds here, um, and we'll need to remember it. You can write it down, obviously. Running kick is 1.5 seconds. Um, the idles don't matter. Hit doesn't matter. Um, the default combos are all about about one second, a bit less. That's fine. And we have our last attack tree is 0 0.7. Yeah, all about one second. All about one second and 2 and 1.5. Cool. So that time is uh, relevant. I mean, it doesn't have to be all that precise, but you need to make sure it's about right. So we're removing this after two seconds because that's how long the trust takes. Um, this is 1.5 seconds, and it doesn't have to be exactly the same, just to be completely clear here, but still. Um, this was 1 second, combo 3, this was um, 0 0.9, 0 0.8 here is fine, and the roundhouse was uh, 0 0.8 is fine as well. Cool. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's it for the, all of our clips, so we're good there. Let's go to our weapon, let's lock this, and now we're, we already set all of this up, so we're good there as well. And the block just needs to have its state, so guard, what was it, brawler, block, and we need to do the same here. So brawler, idle, and you can mask this as well, obviously. Um, which might not actually be the worst idea, but yeah, you can mask those as well. Cool. So we've got all of that. So what we're going to do next is we're going to set up some basic combo, uh, combat mechanics. So I'm going to use a couple of triggers here. So um, inputs. Uh, key down. I'm going to use E to... Um, you know, get in combat modes. You can have this be something that automatically works as well, obviously. Um, e, combat mode. Um, Q is going to be, oh, input. Um, Q is going to be focus. And I really want to highlight here that focus is a sort of targeting system, um, but it's actually limited in the way it works. Um, if you really want a proper targeting system, definitely use the combat module. I've covered it so many times in videos, but um, focus works fine for something basic. Uh, it does not compare to how well the targeting system works. So just want to highlight that, but we only have one enemy here, so I'm not going to bother setting that up as it's not really relevant. And I'm going to just use uh, right mouse down um, for combat. Now that's the nice thing about the melee module here, so let's call this um, attack, is that just having one trigger with one action being, um, where is it, input melee attack A is enough um, and it allows us to do all of those uh, combos. So that's the really cool thing about the melee system. Um, this will be damage conditions, I think that was damage, no, not damage conditions. Uh, drawing, it's not really the right word here, and focus. So I'm using conditions because I want the same button to allow us to, uh, you know, turn it on and off. So this was drawing, um, so draw weapon, brawler. holster weapon and here the important thing here is that the condition really go to the melee module um, because the it's called is character armed and the problem is is that there's a condition for the shooter that literally looks the same I mean there's a one space difference so that's why you need to make sure that you really look this up through the melee module and find the right one because the condition is is if he's armed with a melee um, you know melee weapon and I see that I did it wrong here as well it's not holster 
its sheath. Uh, again, one of those little downsides if you have both mo uh, modules. Um, this is the right one though, so this is the right melee weapon um, because we have the shield here as well. Now we don't need to draw the shield as that's by default set up with the brawler, so we're good there as well. So for focus, um, it will be really similar. So focus, and I'm just going to be focusing on our character here. Again, this is not setting up some targeting system, this is just to make it work. Um, and yeah, we can just, you know, do the same one, uh, release target, and the condition is going to be, uh, has character, and uh, now is he focused? And yeah, that's, uh, that's perfect. We're good there. And let's try this out, let's just see what happens. And not a lot happens without a camera motor, so let's make sure that's actually in there. Perfect, and I'm going to make sure it's actually detecting it just to make sure I'm not in play mode again. So I'm going to do an offset of 0 0.7, it's a bit bigger than usual. Um, yeah, I'm going to turn off all of these inputs and repositioning is going to be a bit faster. Now before we go into play mode, we obviously need to make sure we have our character melee on our player and the enemy has that as well. Otherwise it won't work and let's go. So E, we're drawing and as you can see, we're floating a bit, you know, that's uh, the downside. And when we walk, even when drawn, we're using the default melee. So that's why the state is actually pretty cool. You could set up your own. I'm going to press Q to focus, so we're, uh, you know, we're really focusing. And, you know, let's, uh, let's do our default melee. As you can see, that looks pretty good. That's our trust, looks awesome as well. And our roundhouse is not really working. It looks a bit weird like this. <laughs> um, our roundhouse is not working, so we need to check that out. And let's try the running. Um, okay, so order is important here. So let's make uh, let's make sure we change that order. And obviously, we need to set up hit reactions, all of that. So first things first, let's actually check our weapon here. So brawler. And the roundhouse is also input forwards, which makes sense why it's not working. And running forwards has to be in the higher priority. So cool, we uh, we have that, so we're good there. So all of those are set up. Now let's go to our next part, and that's actually adding some um, hit conditions. So trigger, and this is going to be a tag enter. So the melee tag we set up um, is going to be used here, and we use some conditions. So let's call these damage conditions, and we'll become over, you know, make adding an additional layer of complication uh, in a bit. Um, but for now, we're just going to test it like this. Um, let's actually give him some stats as well. And I do want to highlight that this is a project I use for my um, audit tutorials as well, which is why I have more attributes. If you have the default stats module with the stats examples installed, which I definitely recommend, you will have HP being 100 and, you know. So I'm going to use um, EHP here. Um, but you can just use HP, doesn't really matter. It's literally the same thing. So condition, um, stats, attribute value, and I'm going to make sure that I drag in the actual character here. Invokers doesn't always work all that well. So, I mean, it works well, but you know, sometimes it's a bit hard to guess the right context to use it in. So condition, if his health is less than zero, then we are going to ragdoll and again make sure you select the character um, otherwise we're going to um, attribute value again make sure we select the character here 
Oh. His health, subtract health. And I'm going to use a list variable here. And index zero, because we want every attack to have different damage. Um, I mean, I want that anyway. So I'm going to use a list variable here. So game creator variable, list variables. And let's, uh, let's drag that in. So list variables, and there we go. And yeah, index zero. Let's rename this to uh, damage output. I think that's a that's a fine name. Um, and what I'm going to do next is just to have some you know some actual hit effects. Is I'm going to instantiate um, some blood effects. So let me lock this for a moment. And I'm using polygon particle effects here. You can use whatever you want. I'm going to duplicate this though because we are going to make a change to this prefab. Um, because we are instantiating this prefab, I also want to make sure it actually disappears at some point. So that's the reason why I'm duplicating it and I'll, I'll make a change to the prefab here. And a one, and there we go. Now this also needs to happen when we ragdoll, something I didn't do in the last video. So make it makes it a bit weird. Um, so yeah, you know, we, we want the blood effect uh, to be there as well. You can do that first. Yeah, first. That's fine. Cool. So yeah, that's, uh, that's really all we need to do here. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll add a default value here of 10, uh, just to make sure it now, you know, it works. Um, and we'll then, uh, set up the proper damage in a bit as well. So with default of 10, at least it works. So we're good there. Cool. So let's open up this blood effect. And as you can see, it's just a simple blood splatter. Um, I'm going to add a trigger here. Change this to on enable. And we need to add the actions like this, so don't press this little button. The actions need to be literally as a component of this because the blood splatter takes uh, two seconds, as you can see, so duration, two seconds. So we're going to add an action wait, and then after two seconds, it's going to destroy itself. And that way we can instantiate a million blood effects and because they'll all still disappear from our scene and hierarchy, it won't cause any performance issues or create a mess. So yeah, really nice. Cool. So we have our basic damage uh, system here for our guy and I'm going to try it out now just to make sure it all works. And if it works properly, we can head over to the last steps of this setup. Cool, so as you can see, and I'm going to pause here and let's select our player. And as you can see, this is our, uh, this is our, oh, what would you call it? Our uh, melee, no, not the melee prefab. I'm going to open up the entire character and I just want to show what we're doing here. Um, yeah, this is a lot of, um, a lot of going down. There we go. So this is the hitbox we're instantiating. And as you can see, that's actually on the right hand. And that's what we're using here. This melee prefab clone, as you can see, it's hard. It's pretty much invisible. And this is what the actual weapon is. Um, but we're not using that. So anyway, let's get back to our scene. So uh, let's actually focus. And yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's pretty cool. We have our roundhouse kick, um, and we're not really hitting him. Oh, we're, we are hitting him. We have our trust, that works as well. And let's get back and actually start running. Oh, okay, that's, that's really cool, actually. Uh, awesome, cool. So as you can see, you know, that, that does a lot of damage because you're already using both of those feet. But yeah, really, really cool. So that's uh, that's working fine. Now the last little steps here are going to be related to uh, the damage output. 
So we created a list variable here that automatically has 10 damage and 10 damage is fine as a starter. But what we want to do is we want to make sure every attack has its own damage value. And there's so many ways to do this. I want to highlight that. So if you're looking at my method and you're thinking, oh, I can do better. I'm pretty sure you can. There's just so many ways you can do this. So on execute, um, I'm just going to go variables, where is variables, there we go, uh, variable number, list variable, damage output, okay that's interesting, ah okay so it's not recognizing it like that. So we'll we'll take a different approach, I guess. Um, let me remove these things. I'm not sure why this is here. Uh, I don't need this either. So um, I'm going to have to take a different approach then. So I have to create a global variable. So um, damage output. There we go. Um, I don't know. Let's just do zero now. Tag everything. There we go. Now I don't even have to do any of that. What am I doing? So let's go back to our prefabs. So I'm going to lock this for now. So combo one, um, let's go back to our prefabs. You know, the folder we created. Um, so here prefabs and let's drag in that damage output. Let's remove it from the scene. We no longer need it. And let's drag that in here. There we go index zero and our damage value is going to be 10 or I think that's fine I mean you can change whatever value you want um, so what we're doing here is we're still using the list variable we just had to make it a prefab because the mailing module exists outside of the, the scene basically so yeah value of 10 um, which is fine. We just need to assign that to the character after, so make sure that I remember that. And then let's go back to our clips and do the same with every clip. So this is clip one, clip two. I'm going to do the same here. By the way, I'm not removing anything. Let's so make sure we actually add that to the top. There we go. and combo three you know you can do 15 here for example if you actually manage to finish the combo shouldn't be that much more you know it's not that special um the roundhouse kick for example i mean there could be a bit more um it's harder to hit as well so we can do 20. the run punch um i'm not actually going to increase that i'm actually going to uh I'm actually going to decrease that simply because we have two colliders here already. So I'm uh, going to copy this over, run punch, and I'm going to decrease the value to, uh, to uh, 8. So if it still connects with both, you know, it will still be 16 damage. So it's pretty decent. And the thrust. Um, I don't know, you can do whatever values you want. I mean, it's completely up to you. It doesn't really matter all that much. Cool, um, let's do, I don't know, 15 as well. I think only the roundhouse is a bit more because it's actually harder to hit. Um, the other ones, you know, you're locking in, so it's not really that hard to hit. Cool, so I'll, uh, I'll demonstrate how this works as well. Um, we just need to make sure that um, here we are using our new one so prefabs and our damage output index zero and we're always adding everything on execute to index zero so that's why we're using index zero so we have our damage system um, that's great and that's nice we have our blood of flat effects um, we do need to have one more thing and that's our state um, because we are using a hit state um, so we do want to uh, 
to demonstrate that. So again, character um, states, hit states, there we go. Cool. And let's do a wait. Um, we're adding it, so um, reset. And let's do a weight of 0 0.5. Yeah, 0 0.5. I think that's okay. Um, and then we're going to reset the state. Or not reset. I'm actually going to put him in um, his melee state straight away. So let's do that. So I think there was a brawler idol. There we go. So we want him to be combat ready straight away. Cool. So yeah, this is uh, this is what we're doing. So we have an actual hit effect, which is really nice as well. Now the last step is making sure blocking is still uh, an option. So the way we go about this is let's unlock this. Um, we have our damage conditions here, and we're actually going to remove. It from here I'm going to add a new one and this will be is blocking question mark cool I'm going to add a condition um, melee is character blocking and this should be a character is he blocking? Yes, then um, I don't know. Going to instantiate something as well. Why not? Some block effect. Um, otherwise, um, execute. Ac uh, now call conditions. Damage conditions. Yeah, I think this will work. Maybe way to finish needs to be turned off. We'll, uh, we'll see about that. And let's add a uh, spark effect. We have lightning, something like that. Electricity. Yeah, electricity effect. Again, transform character one. And um, there's so many better prefabs, you know, effects to you know demonstrate blocking. I'm just using this one because I have it, but. You can use whatever you want. So if he's blocking, then we're not taking any damage. We're just, you know, showing a particle effect. Um, if we're not blocking, because that's the else, then we're running our damage conditions. So it might be that way to finish has to be turned off. We'll uh, see that in a bit. Now, in order to demonstrate this, I'm uh, going to create a simple empty here, which is going to be a on start. So I on start trigger, as you might have guessed. And uh, yeah, no, let's just create some actions here. Uh, draw weapon. Uh, again, character, our character here. And this will be brawler, so he's going to use the same thing here. Wait, I don't know, two seconds, maybe that's a bit much. And then we're going to execute new actions. So let's create those actions. Actions. And, you know, this is simply going to be, a, you know, a quick uh, test. So he's going to block, then not block, and, you know, etc. Uh, just to make sure it's working. So uh, melee blocking. Uh, character there we go start blocking wait so he's going to be blocking for I don't know three seconds and he's going to start uh, stop blocking um, he's going to wait for I don't know ten seconds we can just finish him off then we just need to make sure it works let's use to five seconds and then restart and yeah that's it so obviously this would not be part of uh, you know your combat actions, but we just need to make sure that the blocking mechanism still works.
Cool. So he's in his uh, in his fight pose. Yeah, some masking would be better for his fight pose, but oh, fine. The animation is what it is, right? So cool. He's blocking. Going to get into position and then uh, then attack him. He's blocking, and as you can see, we're not doing any damage. We have a spark, and now he is taking hits. Cool. Um, let's do the run, and let's hope we time that well. Okay, that's pretty cool. Roundhouse. And yeah, we finish him off. Awesome. So... Yeah, all of that is uh, is working really well. It looks pretty cool. I'm not really sure what happened to his <laughs> to his head here, but yeah, that's uh, that's really nice. So as you can see, um, I should have done the destroy for the electricity as well, but you know how to do that now. Um, as you can see, quite a bit of a work around to um, you know to get this all working but I think it's worth it if you are going for that type of uh, combat um, hopefully there will be a workaround to make sure it all still works with um, with the melee module completely entirely um, but this is you know a pretty decent way to get around it and uh, yeah I think it works pretty well um, obviously you might need to uh, change the um, you know make the hitboxes a tiny bit bigger as you can see here the hitboxes are um, you know are a bit too small um, they should be a tiny bit bigger but yeah you can uh, mess around with that so hope you enjoyed this uh, if you did please hit like and subscribe and I'll see you next time